Linda and I'm the nutrition editor for Healthy Food Guide and we're here today with our very first Facebook Live. So we're hoping to get lots of questions, it's about veganism and what we perceive to be a, a growing trend in people going vegan. Only yesterday I was talking to a young chef and he said loads of his mates are going vegan, all, all blokes, and he said it mostly because of the, the moral and ethical issues, environmental issues as well. So I was really interested to hear that because you know, you hear about these trends, and you know, I really wonder if people are actually doing it. So there he was, telling me firsthand it was the case, and he came up with loads of questions to, to ask me. But uh, before we get to his ones, we have got some from our readers. Uh, first of which is um, Karen Yates, who lives in Wimbledon. And she says, hello Amanda, I'm considering going vegan, but I'm worried I won't get all the protein, vitamins, and minerals I need to be truly healthy. Please, can you advise? Many thanks for your help, Karen. Well, I can honestly say, Karen, there's, um, apart from that we've got a fabulous article in our February issue of Healthy Food Guide, the um, Vegan Society have some amazing advice on their site, their website. Um, and at the end of the day, if you do it carefully, if you research your diet carefully before you start, uh, you can either sort of do it all in one go and just kind of make the switch overnight, or perhaps slightly easier is to do it in, in gradual steps and perhaps you know, change one meal a day into a vegan meal for a week and the next week do another meal as well and so on. Um, but the answer to your question is yes, you can get all the protein you need. Interestingly, if you look at our national diet and nutrition survey in, the, in this country, most people eat way more protein than they need anyway in the first place. But when you're going vegan and you're thinking about protein, then you need to think about combining protein sources, so some of the essential amino acid building blocks that we need in our diet to have healthy um, growth and healthy muscles and healthy skin come from different sources. So you can get them all together in one animal food, like eggs or um, cheese or milk or uh, chicken, for example, or fish. But when you go to become a vegan, you need different sources, so for example, a combination of pulses like um, baked beans, for example, with some rice or some bread, that, that would bring the combination together of the amino acids that you need. You don't have to have them at the same time, but you do need to have them in close proximity, so in the same day would be good. So there's absolutely no problem getting enough protein um, if you plan your meals and snacks carefully. In terms of vitamins and minerals, that is um, slightly more challenging in some cases. Certainly with vitamin B12, you have to be incredibly careful. The Vegan Society have quite clearly stated on their website, and it's true if you speak to any registered dietitian as well, they will say to you that you really do need either to have fortified foods, foods that are fortified with vitamin B12, or take a vitamin B12 supplement, either weekly or daily. And it's absolutely crucial because a lack of vitamin B12, it doesn't become apparent um, initially. It happens over time, and at, at, when it gets to a certain point, it's actually irreversible. You have to irreversible nerve damage as a result of not getting enough. Absolutely crucial that you take that into account. With other things like um, um, minerals and iron, a lot of women in this country and teenage girls are not getting as much iron as we'd like them to. They're not, they're not meeting their daily recommended intake. In some case, cases, not even meeting their lower recommended daily intake. So iron is one that you need to be careful of. You can absolutely get it from vegan foods, but you do need to plan. And again, the Vegan Society has some great advice on this. But just, um, just off the top of my head, things like um, nuts and seeds and nut butters, um, wholemeal foods, uh, dark green leafy vegetables like cabbage and kale, and fortified breakfast cereals as, as well do contain iron. So you just need to make sure that you're really packing those foods in. And also be really careful, as we mentioned in our edition in February, of trying to avoid <coughs> foods and drinks that block iron absorption at the same time as having those iron-rich vegan sources. So, for example, um, there are substances in tea which can block the absorption of iron, so you'd be better off having your cup of tea away from your breakfast if you're having a fortified breakfast meal. Just taking those sort of things into account. And then, on the other hand, vitamin C-rich foods like oranges, for example, enhance iron absorption when it's coming from plant sources. So it would be better to have some oranges or very small glass of orange juice with your vegan breakfast than, than the tea. So just really think about that. Obviously calcium as well. Calcium is another mineral which um, young girls and some women aren't really hitting their daily targets. So things like fortified uh, soy milks are a good source of calcium. Almond milk is good for calcium naturally. Uh, but do look for the fortified version so that you're getting the B12 and the vitamin D as well. 
And just really, I think the key to all of this is sitting back and planning it before you launch in. So I hope that's a, a full enough answer, Karen. Um, secondly, here. <laughs> Karen Bordeaux Barnes, which I think is the most fabulous woman. <laughs> she lives in Chiselhurst in Kent. And she says, What's your advice on the best way to ensure you get enough protein as well on a vegan diet? Or is it that we actually eat too much protein? Well, certainly, as I mentioned in my answer to Karen, um, if you're currently an omnivore, then National Food Survey data does suggest that most of us are getting too much protein, or certainly more than we need. So, as I said in my answer to Karen, it's absolutely um, possible to, to get enough. Um, protein from vegan sources, so soy milk, tofu, as I mentioned earlier, the pulses, nuts, the seeds, they're, they're fantastically good. Um, Naomi Lowe, who comes from South London, thank you for this question, Naomi. She says, what are the best milk alternatives? I love cashew milk, but I'm worried about shop-bought varieties being high in sugar. Have you got any good recipes uh, for making your own? Well, actually, if it happens to do in the Healthy Food Guide um, magazine on the website, um, if you Google that. Um, but if you're looking for the best milk alternative, I would highly recommend a soy milk, a vegan soy milk, looking again for the ones that are fortified. So look for ones that are fortified with vitamin B12, with vitamin D, and importantly calcium, because if you're making that switch from dairy milk, which is naturally a good source of calcium, to a plant-based milk, it's very important to get the fortification, except in the case of almond milk, which already has calcium in it at the, about the same level as dairy milk but even so I would look for the ones that are again fortified with B12 vitamin D um, and there are unsweetened ones because one of the things you mentioned here is you're worried about shop bought ones having high levels of sugar certainly with the almond milk and um, you, you can you can get unsweetened versions that are almost sugar free added sugar free um, right what have we got here oh, we've got one here that's been passed over for now Reduce absorption. So and that was from Rebecca Almond, who is from Hartenden. So thank you for that one, Mel, for passing that over. We've also got um, <coughs> a question about. Um, it says here from a reader, Liz Warren, is it okay to bring my kids up vegan? Yes, again, it is. With children, you have to be ex exceptionally careful, obviously, because they're growing at a fast rate, so they need their calories. There is a chance that just a chance that you may fall into this um, situation where they're eating so, so much food that's high in fibre that they're perhaps not able to get enough calories into their little body. Um, so again, just thinking about being very balanced. If you are thinking of um, having a baby, an infant from birth, then breastfeeding obviously is a great way of feeding the baby. But if you can't breastfeed, then you can get vegan soy milk. The only thing with vegan soy milk, as we point out on the um, vegan, web, uh, vegan Society website is that uh, a soy milk, um, fortified soy milk for infants does contain vitamin D which comes from an animal source. That is literally, that's by law, it has to come from that source and that's one sort of slight compromise you need to make. But yes, you absolutely can bring children up with vegan, but I would say just be extra vigilant if you are in any way concerned after you've read guidelines for vegan society ask your doctor to refer you to a registered dietitian or a registered nutritionist and they will be able to give you one-to-one -one advice to really get down to the nuts and bolts and make sure you get a whole range of vitamins, minerals, protein, all those things that children need for um, sustaining growth and development. And of course, omega-3, which you can get from plant sources as well. Uh, what have we got next? 
we've got to get and oh, do you have recommendations for egg alternatives in bacon? That's um, from Jordan, written bacon for Jordan Kelly and uh, Jordan Kelly Lindsay. No, yes, there uh, are alternatives to bacon uh, which I have written some notes on. Um, right. Can you take my sheet of paper with my notes? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yes, you have. Sorry. <laughs> Well, Amanda, we have some on our website. Oh, yes. um, mm -hmm. Our recipe consultant, Phil Mundy. Oh, yes. um, if you search on on the website for for vegan yes. egg alternatives. I'm just being told by yeah. Laura, our Laura <laughs> that vegan alternatives do appear on our amazing website as well. And Phil Mundy's our quite extraordinary chef, and Amanda <laughs> put together delicious recipes which are healthy as well as being um, tasty and flavoursome. Because without that, there's absolutely no point. <laughs> <laughs> So, oh my gosh, what, so what care should vegan runners and athletes take with their diets? Well, again, it's perfectly possible to be a healthy vegan. And in fact, this trend towards younger people turning vegan um, really does prove this. I mean, although obviously you can do it at any age, um, there are many, many athletes and um, high performing athletes at that as well, sports people who manage to survive and thrive on a vegan diet. So, there's absolutely no reason why it's not possible. You would just need to make sure that you are getting the right amount of protein, but that's quite easy in terms of um, after you've exercised, for example, if you have a soya milk um, a drink that you put some uh, banana into, just the same way that, that um, an omnivore <coughs> would use that as a, a kind of sports drink for replenishing both carbohydrate and protein after sports. That would be a great um, post-workout drink. And then just making sure that your, each meal contains enough carbohydrates and proteins as well. So yes, you absolutely can. Um, I would, again, that there's a very good section on the Vegan Society on the whole systems of athletes. Um, also worth logging on to Anita Bean's website because Anita Bean's got um, some fantastic sports nutritionists that I've got so much time for. She's got some good advice as well for vegan athletes. And what have we got here? Oh, what's a healthy vegan snack? Susan from Bridge End. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry about that. In fact, she's bitter as well because I was having a coughing fit. <laughs> we lost connection there. Um, what's a healthy vegan snack? Snack from Susan from Bridge End. Well, I think what's important to point out here is it's very easy to have unhealthy vegan snacks. <laughs> there are plenty of them on the shelves uh, where producers have sort of um, concocted snacks from sugar and fat and uh, obviously. Uh, it's very easy to overindulge even if you are on vegan food. So just, I mean, the, the things that I would always fall back on, and that would be the case for an omnivore as well, are the things like nuts and seeds and fruit. I mean, why not? They're naturally out there. They're packed with nutrients. They're the sort of things that don't make your blood sugars go up and down wildly. And they're just of nature's perfect way of um, having to feel something extra in between meals. Now, thank you, Mel. We've got a question here. Um, we've got Rebecca from Islington, Rebecca Junza. Do you have vegan restaurants recommendations? Well, thankfully, yes, we do. We prepared for that question, Rebecca. Um, we printed out a list of restaurants that do have vegan options. So, for example, R1 is a chain that has lots of vegan venues, small plates and tapas and mains and desserts. Bella Italia, they say, asked for pizza without cheese, as well as the vegan <coughs> pasta dishes and a new vegan cake. Well, that's a great example of being okay for a treat, but one of those sort of uh, vegan things that isn't necessarily also brimming with health. So um, you do need to be slightly careful there, but obviously if you're going out for meal, then why not? Uh, in Booth, there's a hummus sandwich, and they have salads, of course. And in Cafe Nero, there are, very, there are vegan friendly wraps, and salad pots and pasta pots. Carluccio's, lovely Italian chain, they have a vegan menu that offers pasta, sides and desserts. 
Costa Coffee offers a vegan trademarked fruit crumbs as well. So don't expect that to be um, entirely virtuous, but it's there if you want a treat. And they have salads um, with more options coming, so they say. Also, your Leon restaurants have curry salads and lots more for vegan. So, yes, I think the key here is to either ring up the restaurant before you go or to check on websites and look at their menus. Um, but do, I think, always being prepared, sort of, it's all about planning. If buying a house is about location, 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 I think planning healthy for any diet, including a vegan, is about planning, planning, and planning. So, if you're concerned at all when you're about to go out, then do just phone ahead, look at the website, check out what you're up to, and see. If they don't have anything on the menu, if they can, I'll tell you something. Most chefs are natural people pleasers and want you to be happy, so they don't want you to come along and simply be eating bread and olives all night and not joining in. That's a general question. Uh, here's a general question. Um, Masuma Masood Islam from Houston in the USA. Welcome. <laughs> Hello. Nice to, nice to have you. Goodness, I don't know what time of the day it is in Houston, but we're very glad you're on board with us. Are protein shakes healthy for an 18 year old boy? Um, well, that's a big question. Uh, protein shakes. Um, even for athletes who are working out, we don't really need to have protein shakes in our diet. Um, again, I would refer you to anitabean.com. Great website. She's a fantastic nutritionist. Lots and lots of information about protein guidelines for athletes and their diets. And um, it, I, I have read some fairly robust research which suggests that after working out, having a combination of milk, whether it's dairy milk or a, a soya milk or a vegan type milk, um, and, a, and some banana in it, is just as effective at helping to recover after exercise. So I would say, um, no, it, they're not necessary, they're absolutely not necessary. Are they healthy? I think just by eating larger quantities of a normal balanced diet, uh, your son would get all the nutrients and you wouldn't be spending an awful lot of money in your case dollars on these shakes because at the end of the day um, you will get enough protein from a mixed balanced diet and any excess protein will eventually be broken down in your body and stored as uh, carbohydrate as we break into carbohydrate the, the nitrogen part of the amino acid will be broken off and disposed of and the carbohydrate bit will simply be converted into to fat we are in the live office, there's other stuff going on in here if you have a little bit in the back. Oh, which one have we got? One at the bottom. That was, oh, we've just done that one. So it's her. Yes, thank you. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pleasure, Miss Um Which one did you want me to do, Mel? The, the soup, the Susan Lowe. Yes, Susan Lowe. How Lowe. important are anthocyanins in vegetables? Is it worth buying purple carrots, for example, if you're going vegan? Well, not if they cost a fortune, because you can get anthocyanins, which are these fabulous bluey purpley pigments in a whole range of vegetables from aubergines for example to red cabbage you don't and obviously blueberries you don't need to um, spend extra money on things like purple carrots and I have to be really honest I'm not even sure there are anthocyanins in, in purple carrots but I think there probably are but no you absolutely don't have to do anything other than just go to your local grocery store your supermarket local market store and just look for the, the veg that are blue and purple in colour and frozen blueberries are, are quite a, a, a better sort of um, uh, source if you're looking for um, blue fruit and veg that are perhaps more affordable. Uh, do I need a B12 supplement with Hannah Doyle or any others? If you're going vegan, absolutely, definitely, you either need fortified foods with B12 or you need a supplement. And I probably would go for a supplement to be on the safe side so that you absolutely know that you're getting enough. If you go to the Vegan Society, there's a very clear um, fact sheet on this very subject. She says, where is it? Vitamin B12, your key fat. As, as you see here, absolutely everyone needs it. Vitamin D is also very important for everybody, whether you're omnivore or vegan or vegetarian. And if you look at the NH choice, NHS Choices website you will, and, and Google vitamin D, you will see that the government is now recommending that everybody considers taking a vitamin D, D supplement all year round. There are some particularly vulnerable groups, uh, groups of people whom it's definitely recommended. So that would be pregnant and breastfeeding women, young children, and people who are slightly older, and also people who aren't getting any exposure to the sun. All groups um, are, even if you don't fall into those groups, then we are recommended just as um, just sort of everyday adults to have the 
vitamin D supplementation during the winter months when we're not getting the exposure to the sun which converts vitamin D under our skin from an inactive form to an active form. So that's another one to be really careful of, whether you're vegan or not. Yeah, okay. Well, one question from Isabella. Isabella from Bradford. Hello, Isabella. I'm interested in going vegan, but I'm not sure I can miss out on cheese. Are there any <laughs> cheese alternatives to vegan? Yes, there are. Um, lots and lots in the shops. I think um, this comes back to the whole um, thing we mentioned earlier. Really. I think it's the first question. About maybe going vegan in stages, and if cheese is an absolute love of yours, then go out, have a look at the different ones on the market, buy them, as you would with any cheese. There will be favourites, there will be ones you don't like so much. I would just... Um, I mean, certainly with soy milk, there are some brands that I can't stand and some that, are absolutely, that I, I love. And obviously, it's different for different people. So I would go out, try, try a few different ones. And perhaps for you, it's a case of just making that, those steps very gradually. And if you don't like the alternative, then maybe you can consider weaning yourself off. But do remember that if cheese is a, a, a sort of a, a favourite, then it does contain lots of nutrients, including calcium. So if it was the mainstay of your diet, um, you'd need to think about where you get your calcium from for your replacement. Is corn okay, says Vanessa from Leicester. That's an interesting one. Um, my understanding is that corn is made with um, some egg whites, so if you're a vegan, that would be a problem. It's absolutely fine if you're vegetarian and you eat eggs, but for a vegan, you'd be looking more to things like uh, tofu as a protein source, and nuts and seeds and pulses. Those sort of foods would be um, on the vegan okay list. So I hope I'm not wrong there. And I hope corn aren't something you're going to eat. I'm not saying I've got everything wrong, but that was certainly my, uh, my back in the recesses of my memory. Corn actually does have egg white in it. So mm. a bit of a surprise. And that, that actually, that's uh, true for many alcohols as well. So when um, the girls were, and I were all looking at uh, researching vegan diets for today to make sure we were across everything, um, and in fact, the young chef I was talking to yesterday said alcohol is a, a, an issue for some of his friends when, he, when they go out at the weekend. So they may be vegan, but they like to party. And um, you know, which alcohol is vegan uh, friendly? And I was looking at some websites, and there's one called barneyboar.com, which is B-A-R-N, as in barn, I-V-O-R-E, barneyboar.com. And that's got a list of um, <coughs> alcohol beverages that are suitable for vegans, because lots of um, alcoholic drinks are actually new additives which are derived from animals to clarify those in the processing, which is quite interesting. And um, honey was another one uh, that we had several questions around the office about. Can I have honey if I'm a vegan? Um, my understanding with honey is it's not that it's not a vegan product, it's just that the bees are being potentially exploited while um, sort of being encouraged to produce honey. So from that point of view, vegan would um, usually try and avoid the honey products. So that's, that's, uh, that's to answer that one. Now what have we got here? Will I lose weight? Will I lose weight? A million dollar question. Well, there is research to suggest that when scientists look at population studies and they look at populations of vegans versus non-vegans, that uh, weight, um, average weights are <coughs> lower in the vegan groups. And this may be because the diets are generally lower in calories, less calorie dense, because you're relying more on vegetables and fruits and pulses, foods that are very filling and perhaps keep you fuller and less likely to overindulge. Um, it's not a given that you're just the, the weight will suddenly fall off. And obviously, if you're a normal body weight, that's not what you want anyway. If you are overweight and you're trying to lose it, then um, if you choose a well-balanced vegan diet, I would suggest that it would be highly likely that you would. Um, but as I said, you must approach it with um, a balance in mind to make sure that you're getting all the nutrients you need and you're not just thinking about calories. So um, that's, a, that's a big one really because weight is obviously on a lot of people's minds. Another one we've got here, um, and the most, what are the most nutritious nuts on a, on a vegan diet? But to be honest, um, with the exception of chestnuts, which are uh, not as rich in uh, nutrients as uh, tree nuts, then really it doesn't really matter which ones you go for. Just go for an, a, a mix of them because some are better than, uh, with some nutrients. Like I say, almonds are great for calcium, for example, vitamin E. Brazil nuts are brilliant for selenium. So you get a nice mix and obviously include the seeds as well because things like um, 
sunflower seeds and pine nuts have a lovely combination of zinc and vitamin E as well. So I would really mix them up when you have um, when you're on a vegan diet and just get lots and lots of different ones. And you can include them in cooking sauce as well and recipes, which you will see on our website. It's got a lovely recipe from Miss Bill Mundy. Um, so what have we got here? Are vegan sweets and treats healthy? Have I covered that? No, I think the answer is no, not so. Oh, do we know any famous vegans? Well, we've been Googling away on this and I'm sure uh, you'll be able to find these similar names. Leona Lewis, she won X Factor, didn't she? Beautiful girl and um, looks incredibly healthy and bursting with vitality. Hayley Mills, for people who are of a slightly different generation, like myself, I remember Hayley Mills. Alicia Silverstone, obviously you have to trust websites to think of the right things here. Daryl Hannah, actress, obviously she was in that um, film that uh, was about the, what was it now, she was in a film with the, oh, Mermaid. <laughs> Whacking Phoenix, I never know if I'm saying his name correctly, he was in loads of different films, obviously Gladiator as well. So yes, there are plenty of uh, celebrity role models, if you like to call them that, out there who are bursting with vitality, who have managed to the transition to veganism and still maintain their health. Oh, part vegan is Novak Djokovic, says Mel. Thank you for that one. If you know of any, then to do please let me know. And he's got a restaurant in Monte Carlo to boot. There we are. Yeah, well, that's good. <laughs> one of the questions that we, that we have been asked as well is about iodine. <coughs> and is it, um, is it possible to uh, get enough iodine when you're on a vegan diet? Well, adults need to aim for 150 micrograms, which is MCG, not MG, um, of, of per day is the recommended daily amount. Um, and we, the, the thing about iodine is that you shouldn't exceed 600 micrograms a day. So what um, it is recommended is that you probably stick with a tablet source so that you really know what you're getting. Because in some cases, um, some seaweeds can... Um, have too much iodine, so that's something, and also be contaminated with toxins. So that's something that we, um, the British Dietetic Association, say: do not use seaweed or kelp supplements. Dietitians recommend that you take iodine supplements because you're confident you're getting just the iodine you need. Vegans with thyroid issues say the British Dietetic Association should discuss iodine intake with their doctor before supplementing. And I think this is a very important point. If you've got any concerns, any worries about individual things, please do ask your GP to refer you to a registered dietitian or a registered nutritionist who will be able to advise you personally and get down to the real nitty gritty. Right. Oh my goodness, we've done 30 minutes, have we now? That's that shot one, isn't it? Oh gosh, our first, um, our first one. Goodness me, that did go quickly. Well, where time is up, so um, please do have a look out for our lovely... February issue, and we've got the gorgeous Tom Daly on the front, who's obviously been diving into a, a treat there. Lots and lots of packed with recipes, beautiful, healthy recipes, lots and lots of things, including last one, veganism, and we hope to enjoy the read. Thank you for joining us.